we like very much to have Aretha's father just come forward. We see him so seldom. Like for him to come and say hello to you. Oh, Reverend C.L. Franklin. Let's give him a hand. Reverend Cleveland, and to all of the musicians in this great choir, I think that uh, Reverend Cleveland picked a bad time for me to make a talk behind all of the spirit and enthusiasm that Aretha has engendered here tonight. It took me all the way back to the living room at home when she was six and seven years of age. It took me back to about 11 when she started traveling with me on the road, singing gospel. I saw you crying, and I saw you responding, but I was just about to bust wide open. <clears throat> You're talking about being moved. Not only because Aretha is my daughter, and of course you know I wouldn't be right upstairs if I didn't appreciate that. But I say with pride that Aretha is not only my daughter, Aretha is just a stone singer. <laughs> Reverend James Cleveland knows about those days. When James was in his late teens, uh, no more than about 20, if that old. <laughs> of course, that's been about 40 years ago. <laughs> uh, came to prepare our choir for a gospel broadcast which is still in existence. And James was living with us for a while, while he was organizing and developing that choir. And he and Aretha used to go in the living room and spend hours in there singing different songs. And Aretha, with that uncanny ear picked up many of his techniques. I am glad that Reverend Cleveland decided and he and Aretha got together to um, make this gospel album. I'm going to say this and I'm finished. I went in the cleaners one day in Detroit to pick up some clothes. And um, Aretha had appeared on a recent television show. And she told me, I saw your daughter Aretha last night. I said, yes. said, uh, how did you like it? She said, it was all right. <laughs> said, but I'll be glad when she comes back to the church. I said, listen, baby, let me tell you something. <clears throat> <laughs> if you want to know the truth, she has never left the church. <clears throat> I said, um, all you have to do is have something in here and the ability to hear and the ability to feel and you will know that Aretha is still a gospel singer. <clears throat> Um, and the way she sings in this church, she sings anywhere she sings. 
she took me with her to Switzerland and France and Italy this past uh, summer. And we were over there about five or six weeks. And I was thinking about, reminiscing over, recapitulating. I'm using big words tonight, you know. <laughs> how the crowds responded in the same way. The Italians, as well as the French and others, many of them could not speak English, Mr. Wexler. That's her recording man back there from um, Atlantic. They couldn't speak English, not conversationally, but they remembered the English words of Aretha's songs that, you know, memorized them. And they would say, eventually, during the program, Aretha, Aretha, spirit in the dark. <laughs> I'm just happy, Reverend Cleveland. And I'm happy for this great choir and all who have contributed to make this a great night. God bless you all. And I've had a wonderful time. Amen. As Aretha show, get ready to leave us tomorrow. May I take this opportunity to say on behalf of myself and the Southern California Choir, how much we love you. And although you'll be gone, there'll always be space for you in our hearts.